today on GameSpot TV. Ever wonder how a game gets made? We talk to the game developers and walk you through it. And we visit the circus to find out that something wicked comes this way. Plus, we have a preview for wannabe ninjas. Stick around, it's game time. Whoa! Hello and welcome to GameSpot TV in Dallas, Texas. I'm Kate Patello. And I'm Adam Sessler, and we're here in front of the offices of the Gathering of Developers. Otherwise known in the industry as God, which is actually pretty appropriate considering we are shooting at a church today. Yes. Now, Texas is home to a ton of development houses. There's Ion Storm, there's Origin, there's 3D Realms, right. and there's on. So we decided to get in there and take full advantage of that and find out how the development process really works. <laughs> Here we are at the Ion Storm offices in Austin, Texas. This is where Deus Ex was produced. And given the size and scope of that title, this is a pretty good place to get the sense of what it takes to make a game. Producer is responsible for everything. And, and that's kind of true. You're responsible for uh, the schedule, the budget, all of the resources. You're responsible for the quality of the game, the gameplay, the testing process, packaging, everything. You know, you've got a, a pre-production process, a production process, and a post-production process. Uh, in pre-production, that's where you kind of map out what the game is going to be. At that point, you uh, you can move into production and start fleshing out the team, hiring all the uh, the production engineers and the production designers and the production artists. Uh, that's the bulk of the project. That's that's the middle year or so, and then you get into a post-production process where you're um, you're dealing with audio, finalizing the audio, uh, testing, 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 um, dealing with packaging issues, and then you know that wonderful day when it hits the shelves. You also need somebody kind of watching over like. Uh, what is our core gameplay across all the missions and who's coordinating how many missions we have and how how far along are they and like when is an individual designer's taste in violation uh, with the with you know the core principles for the game you know so that's a lot of times that's what a uh, lead designer ends up doing basically the role of designer on a project today is really dictated by what kind of game you're making uh, we were making a first person perspective role playing game so the designers did basically uh, a huge percentage of the content. We built the world. We're world builders. The purpose of audio is to immerse the player in the experience. Now these days games are becoming more and more like simulations, you know, of course, you know, the more realism. You know, you've got more, you know, 3D, you've got, you know, a lot more immersiveness, you've got a lot more realism in the games. And so what people are expecting is, you know, make you feel as though you're part of the world. We have these 10 states for every basic type of character in the game and somebody has to sit there and write you know, different things that character, each character would say in those situations. You need to phrase something that's generic enough that fits in all situations, but at the same time makes the player feel like the character is responding specifically to what he's doing. QA is the process of testing and, and ensuring that the quality of a product is as high as possible before it goes to market. From the moment that we get the product, we're looking for issues. We're looking with a critical eye towards, this is working, this doesn't make sense, this is broken. At the point that we find those things, we can't just say, oh, wah, it's broken. We have to go back and clearly identify exactly what the problem actually is with as much information as possible. I know what kind of games I want to make, and I can communicate that clearly to people. Um, and you surround yourself with people who want to make that kind of game. Now that we've talked to a studio that worked on a single player game, we thought it appropriate to see what it takes to work on a multiplayer game, especially a massive multiplayer game. So we crossed town to go to Origin, who gave us Ultima Online, and are currently working on their follow-up, aptly titled Origin. I'm the person who is sort of the judge and jury, the decision maker for the project on what features are going in, what features are going out, and setting the priorities for the game and sort of keeping the vision. When we start a game, we do a long design process. We take that and we start actually writing code, working with the designers to get what they want to happen. Then we actually test the game, and then we actually finally, one blessed day, manage to ship and actually get it out the door. And I guide all of this team of artists in terms of schedules uh, and timelines and cohesiveness and look and feel. Everybody on this team is an artist. Uh, they have their own portfolio. They are photographers or filmmakers or sketch artists, painters. Uh, that's the most important thing because training people is something that's not beyond our means, but 
teaching people art is something that really you need the eye. In a game like this, it's really not like there is no end, there is no winning. Uh, you participate in this virtual space. Really, when we talk about it, you know, a lot of the times we talk about not creating a game per se, but creating this world, a virtual world for people to inhabit. And you know, all the systems that we put in place are tools for them to participate in this world rather than play a game. If you want to find out more about games and how they're developed, come to the GameSpot TV website. There you'll find our entire feature and streaming video, plus extra interviews with game developers. Coming up on GameSpot TV, after over a decade of silence, Strider's back with a vengeance. And Buzz Lightyear goes to infinity and beyond on your Dreamcast. To infinity and beyond! Welcome back to GameSpot TV here in the sound booth at Gathering of Developers in Dallas, Texas. Now, we received many emails from viewers asking us about how to get into the game industry. Well, it's still a relatively new industry, so the career path hasn't really been clearly defined yet. So, to find the answer, we went right to the source. Get a degree, get a degree, get a degree, get a degree. I can't stress that enough. Good liberal arts education will do wonders. You know, the ability to express yourself clearly in writing and in speech. Um, some art classes, I mean, having a, a, a keen sense of aesthetics, really good. No matter what direction you're gonna go in, you're gonna want to take computer science classes, period. Even if you wanna be an artist, you should take computer science classes. Maybe not as many as a programmer, but you should definitely take computer science classes because you want to understand how the things work because that affects everything you do. I have a, a few courses in programming and I got to say that it's helped a lot. The industry as well is really solidifying right now. It's much more important to write good code than ever in the past, so it's very important that you go learn the basics. You know, you really want to know how to write some code. Uh, I would be so much better at my job if I were a coder. If you really want to get games in the street, you go write a game on your own. And then you go show this to people. It's a good way to impress people. For Ion Storm, I specifically wrote a script using the characters in their game and give, gave it to them as a sample. Having a book, uh, a book uh, of uh, maps that you can show off or, or other design stuff that you can show off that shows that you understand aesthetics as well as uh, game balance and fun. Sign on with a game company as a tester or something. And, that, and as a tester, you work with everybody uh, at the company, from marketing down to the programmers. You want to be in the quality assurance department uh, because they always need people who love games. It's a great way to interact with developers and, and show them what your design sense is like. Um, it's, it's the best way to get into the business I can think of. So what we look for in QA people is attention to detail, being able to identify what they like or don't like about something. It is really easy to say, this sucks. It is significantly more constructive to say, this sucks, this is why, and this is what you can think about doing to make it better. Play lots of games. Uh, but of course you have to balance that with your schoolwork. But definitely play lots of games. The more knowledge you have about games, the better informed you are, especially when you go into the interview process, because every interview I ever do, I always ask about games. While it is an extreme example, a good instance of a few people getting together to create a game to gain entry into the games industry is Crow Team, a group of three Croatians who created the game Serious Sam, a title that has a test demo that has created one of the biggest buzzes in the industry. Now, Kudelka is a game that came out back in the spring. Didn't rate very well, but it has a pretty cool intro.